Men's sexual relationships in the Roman Empire were a complex and diverse phenomenon, which not only had a profound impact on the personal lives of the people of that time, but also had a significant impact on the political and cultural life of the country. In this video, we will delve into the world of love and passion in the Roman Empire, examine the fates of male concubines, and learn about the most famous Romans who had sexual relations with other men. A general picture of sexual relations between men in Rome. There were many forms of homosexual relationships in the Roman Empire, including relationships with slaves and so-called concubines, as well as free love affairs. Although sex between men was legally permissible, public opinion was contradictory. On the one hand, a man taking an active role in sex with another man was considered acceptable, but a passive partner could be the object of ridicule and scorn. Homosexual relationships were also present in the lives of some famous Romans. Although historical sources may be ambiguous or controversial on this point, here are a few examples of such relationships. Two famous Roman poets, Horace and Virgil, allegedly had sexual relations with each other. Although there is no direct mention of their love affair, their poems contain passages that can be interpreted as expressions of male love and mutual affection. Gaius Petronius Arbiter, Roman writer and author of the Satyricon, was known for his very active free sexual life, including sex relations with men. Numerous references to homosexual relationships can be found in his novel Satyricon, although it is difficult to say with certainty how much they reflect the author's personal experience. Although Julius Caesar himself was known for his heterosexual relationships, there is evidence of his relationships with men as well. One of these was King Nicomedes IV of Bithynia, with whom Caesar spent some time as a young man. These rumors of a sexual relationship between them were used by his political enemies to discredit Caesar during his rule of the empire. Male concubines in the Roman Empire. Concubinage was common in the Roman Empire, Male concubines were often slaves or semi-slaves who were acquired by emperors and nobles for their pleasure. Their fate depended on their masters. Some gained influential positions and became indispensable advisors, while others suffered cruelty and humiliation. Male concubines in the Roman Empire had a special place in the social hierarchy and played an important role in the lives of emperors and nobles. Their status and duties may have varied, but in general their existence was indicative of the complexity and diversity of sexual relations in Roman society. Consider some aspects of the lives of male concubines. Male concubines were often foreigners, captured as a result of military conquests or acquired in slave markets. Because of their status as concubines, they were able to gain a higher social position and influence. The living conditions of male concubines depended on their masters and circumstances. Some lived in luxury and received expensive gifts, clothing, and training. They might also serve as counselors or diplomats, using their position to further their own interests or those of their masters. Others might suffer cruelty, humiliation, and violence, be treated like animals and forced to do hard labor. Male concubines could play an important role in the political life of the Roman Empire, becoming instruments of power and intrigue. They could also influence cultural life, becoming patrons of the arts or inspiring poets and artists. One of the most famous male concubines who played an important role in the political life of the Roman Empire and was involved in scandals and intrigue was Spore. Sporus was a concubine and lover of the Roman Emperor Nero. Sporus was a handsome young man, and he was compared to Nero's dead wife, Poppaea Sabina, because of the similarity in their appearance. This led Nero to associate with him and make him his concubine. However, the relationship between Nero and Spore was much more complicated and strange than a mere love affair. Nero became very attached to Sporus, and their relationship became increasingly public and explicit. In one of the most famous stories of their relationship, Nero even had a public wedding with Sporus, where he played the role of bride. This caused scandal and amazement among Roman society, as such an explicit homosexual relationship was considered indecent and inappropriate for the emperor. The dispute played an important role in Nero's political life, influencing his decisions and participating in palace intrigues. However, their relationship ended tragically when Nero was forced to commit suicide after his reign was faced with mass riots and conspiracies. Sporus also committed suicide after Nero's death, 
presumably out of desperation and grief. The story of Sporus is one of the clearest examples of how a male concubine could play an important role in the political life of the Roman Empire. Life of slavery and sex in the Roman Empire. Sexual slavery in the Roman Empire played an important role in social and cultural life. Slaves, both male and female, were often used to satisfy the sexual needs of their masters. Often they were foreigners captured during the expansion of the empire. The appearance and attractiveness of slaves played an important role, as they had to conform to the aesthetic preferences of their masters. Examples of famous sex slaves. One of the most famous sex slaves in the Roman Empire was Antinu, a young Greek youth who became a favorite of Emperor Hadrian. Antinu died under mysterious circumstances, only about 20 years old. He was most likely the victim of intrigue and was killed because of jealousy. Tiberius, the second emperor of Rome, was known for his depraved tastes and his frequent participation in orgies. He had several male slaves and concubines whom he used for his sexual pleasure. However, like Caesar, many of these stories may have been exaggerated or distorted by his enemies to tarnish the emperor's name. Sexual relations between adult men and adolescent boys in the Roman Empire was one of the types of sexual relations that took place in those days. Such sexual relationships had their roots in Greek culture, with which Roman culture was closely connected, and to which it owed a great deal. The educational and socializing aspects of such relationships. Unlike the ancient Greek ties between men and boys, which included an educational and mentoring aspect, their Roman counterpart did not have the same strict social structure and function. However, the relationship between older men and young boys could still contain elements of mentoring and teaching. The legal and moral norms of such relationships. In the Roman Empire, sexual relations between adult men and adolescent boys were legal, but subject to certain norms and restrictions. An adult man's active role in sexual relations with a boy was considered acceptable, but a man's passive role could be the subject of ridicule and scorn. In addition, Roman norms demanded dignity and abstinence, especially for men from the upper classes. Examples of such unions from the history of ancient Rome. One of the most famous examples of such unusual relationships in Rome is associated with the poet Virgil, who, according to some sources, had numerous love affairs with young boys. His poem Eclogues contains several poems that trace the theme of male love for teenage boys. In his work, The Bucolics, Virgil created a series of elegiac poems that describe the idealized world of shepherds and their love experiences. In these poems, Virgil often wrote about love between men and young boys, drawing inspiration from Greek poetry, especially the work of Theocritus. For example, in one elegy, Virgil describes the love of the shepherd Corydon for the handsome young man Alexis. Corydon praises the beauty and charm of Alexis, but suffers because his love is not reciprocated. In other poems, Virgil also mentions love between men and young men, indicating his interest in the subject. However, although these poems contain numerous references to male love, they are not autobiographical and do not necessarily reflect Virgil's personal feelings and experiences. Instead, they can be interpreted as literary images and allegories that depict universal human experiences such as love, suffering, and the beauty of nature. Thus, although Virgil wrote about love for young boys in his poems, we cannot say with certainty that he himself experienced such feelings in his personal life. That's it, friends. What would you like to see next on our channel?